My name is Alex Jacob. I'm the CEO of CMJ here in the UK, and I'll be leading you through today. And I hope it'll be a really good experience wherever you're listening to. Now, I realize some of you are long-term supporters of CMJ, and you know the format of many of our conferences. But some people are going to be new to CMJ and are perhaps tuning in especially to hear the interview with Amir. But we thought it'd be really helpful just to give a little bit of the history of CMJ to those of us who are not familiar with it. And one of my colleagues, Paul Haynes, is going to speak to us in a moment and give us five really important historical reference points for the Ministry of CMJ. So I'm going to hand over to Paul in a moment. He's coming in live from the lockdown city of Leicester. Uh, so he's going to come in live. But before I do that, let's pray and ask for God's blessing on our whole program together today. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to learn, to share and to reflect. We ask for your blessing on today's conference. We ask for your blessing on the ministry among Jewish people. And may each person sharing and learning today know of the leading of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. So, all the way, live from Leicester, Paul Haynes. Thank you, Paul. Hi, good morning, everybody. And uh, well, Alex has already introduced me. I'm Paul Haynes. And in normal times, I'm part of CMJ's field team. As you heard, we can't even join with our colleagues this morning and be within a meter distance because we, my wife and I, Janie, live in lockdown Leicester. Uh, so uh, a warm welcome to our living room uh, in Leicester. And um, I just want to add to Alex's welcome to our 2020 conference. And as he said, uh, having a well-known Israeli speaker uh, plus other uh, renowned speakers and using this Zoom format means that there's possibly people that uh, are new to CMJ. CMJ, it's those initials again. The church's ministry among Jewish people. And you may not know very much about CNJ, so I want to tell you, using five firsts, which we like to claim, we are, CMJ, are the first Jewish mission society. So CMJ was established to share the good news with Jesus, about Jesus, with Jewish people. So after the 16th century Reformation, when people began to be able to read the Bible for themselves, a growing number of Christians realized that the Jewish people were still part of God's salvation plan and that their return to the biblical homeland and recognizing Jesus as their Messiah were actually key steps on the route to Jesus's return. Now, political and economic upheavals in Europe in the 18th century encouraged Christians to begin to investigate the prophecies which related to Jesus's return, which in turn prompted the early mission enterprises. Part of that mission work was a young man called Joseph Frey, he was a German-born Jewish believer in Jesus who came to London to work for the London Missionary Society. And in 1808, at a, a London Mission Society public meeting, he proposed that a new initiative be set up to be called, are you ready for this? The London Society for Visiting and Relieving the Sick and Distressed and Instructing the Ignorant, especially such as are of the Jewish nation. Not a title that would go down too well in today's culture, but that was then. In 1809, the society officially became known as the London Society for Promoting the Gospel Amongst Jewish People. Inevitably, that soon became contracted and we became known as the London Jews Society. The membership list included royals, aristocrats, MPs, influential churchmen, eminent business people who all worked alongside ordinary Christians to commend Jesus to the Jewish people and to educate the church about Christianity's Hebrew roots. Our second first, CMJ established the first modern Hebrew speaking congregation. CMJ provided health care and education to the large Jewish population in the East End of London, but the society also shared the gospel message. Significant numbers of Jewish people responded, and by 1813, there was a congregation of Jewish believers meeting in Bethnal Green, using the Hebrew language. It was called B'nai Avraham, the sons of Abraham, and this was probably the first congregation of Jewish followers of Jesus, worshipping in Hebrew since New Testament times. 
So it's no exaggeration to say that the, the foundation of the modern Messianic Jewish movement began there. Our third first, William Wilberforce. In 1809, the future Prime Minister, William Wilberforce, became our first Vice President. At that time, in England, the Evangelical Revival was in full swing, and Parliament contained several influential Evangelical Christians. Wilberforce was working with them to end Britain's involvement in the slave trade, to provide food and social support for the poor, and to spread the gospel worldwide using Britain's empire links. But along with many evangelical Christians, Wilberforce recognized the essential role Jewish people played in God's sweeping salvation plan. British government foreign policy reflected this theological thought and Jerusalem, which was then part of the Ottoman Turkish Empire, soon became the focus for diplomatic and missionary activities. And Great Britain began to see itself as a key player in helping the Jewish people return to their biblical homeland and to establish a nation. Our fourth first, CMJ's Mission Church was the first Protestant church built in the Middle East. So the joint efforts of the British government and the Anglican church enabled a mission station to be established in Jerusalem. And permission was then obtained from the Turkish government to build a church at the mission base just inside the Jaffa Gate. This was an unheard of concession as no new churches can be built in a Muslim country. Christ Church was consecrated in 1849, the first Protestant church ever to be built in the Middle East. And finally, our fifth first was we're the first mission society to support Messianic Judaism. CMJ's work was established in Israel 100 years before the modern state existed. Once again, CMJ was providing education and health care for the local Jewish community. Before there were even Jewish schools and hospitals. But of course, they were sharing the gospel message too. CMJ was there through the mandate period, at independence in 1948, and during the wars of the 20th century. And in 1967, after the Six Day War, when there were very, very few Jewish believers in Israel, CMJ supported the few baby fellowships. And very soon we established our own Hebrew speaking congregations at our centers in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem and Haifa. So CMJ was the first mission society in modern times to support and encourage Israeli messianic congregations. In fact, a number of the oldest messianic fellowships in Israel have their roots in CMJ centers, where CMJ workers encourage new believers in Jesus to express their love of God within a Jewish context. CMJ continues to preach and teach Jesus for the Jewish people, and Jewish roots for Christians, and to support and encourage anyone who wants to be a faithful follower of Jesus. We hope that gives you an insight into who we are at CMJ. Thanks for listening. Enjoy our first um, online. And now back to you, Alex. Thank you so much, Paul. And uh, that was great to hear of those five really significant uh, important uh, catalysts coming from the ministry of CMJ. When you reflect on the past, it gives you a real sense of privilege and responsibility for the present and a hope for the future. So that was really, really good. Thank you.